In this video, we're going to look at crude oil refining. So essentially, how does the crude oil go from the ground to being something that's useful, in, say, for fueling our automobiles or being used in our home to heat it as natural gas? Um, how, do we, how do we make that, those series of steps? So one of the first things to understand is that crude oil is a product of the fossilization process process. So you've got the sun is going to convert its, that solar energy is going to be converted to um, organic life through the process of photosynthesis, right? So that's nothing new. Um, and then that organic life has got a ton of, you know, sugars, proteins, fats, those sorts of things. So from plants or um, animals, probably a lot of it is coming from microorganisms, right? Like plankton or something like that in the ocean. And if those things then get covered in sediments, and then those sediments become sedimentary rock, it basically, it seals the organic life that those organic molecules under inside the sedimentary rock and there's really almost no oxygen there and so over time this fossilization pro process makes crude oil coal and natural gas crude oil is a mixture of many hydrocarbons and so crude oil is really a sticky mess and it is useless as crude oil. Um, what needs to happen is it needs to be broken into fractions of specific kinds of hydrocarbons, specific sizes. So we want to make sure that our hydrocarbons are purified from that gross mess of crude oil into useful oil byproducts. Um, so crude oil can be found as crude oil from uh, underground resources and it can usually be pumped out of the ground um, if it's light crude it gets pumped out pretty easily if it's heavy crude you might need to use some heat and steam to make it less viscous so oil is very thick and heavy oil is extremely thick and it's hard to pump so it's kind of like a thick milkshake you can't suck it through a straw very easily but if you warm it up enough um, you can get that to flow more easily. So sometimes crude oil needs to be heated up, but essentially it gets pumped out of the ground. Oil sand is different. Oil sands are a mixture of oil, crude oil and sand. And that makes it extremely thick, dense, and kind of useless in its base state. I mean, indigenous people uh, historically might have used some of that oil sand for sealing up um, birch bark canoes and, and things like that and so there was it was purposeful but there weren't a lot of purposes other than maybe being able to seal things up um, because it is so thick firm and and kind of messy and gross so when you get oil sands oil sands need to have the sand separated from the oil so we'll talk a little bit about that um, what they need to do to purify that is to separate the sand from the oil and that can be done um, using the properties of hydrocarbons. So some of the hydrocarbon properties that are used or exploited to help separate them is a boiling point and melting point. So fractional distillation which I'll talk about in a moment you separates hydrocarbons by boiling them and then condensing them back. Solubility can be used to separate hydrocarbons um, because the alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatics are all nonpolar, and so there is varying amount of solubility, and sometimes you can use that to separate those um, hydrocarbons from other things that are more polar. So you can use solvent extraction, or you might use water or a nonpolar solvent to be able to separate out the different kinds of molecules. Density can be used, and so for instance, when you're when they're separating the oil from the sand, 
the sand is much more dense than the oil itself. And so if they heat it up, they can exploit the difference in density of the two materials using centrifugation. So they spin it and the more dense materials go to the outside. Um, sometimes they can even use things like viscosity or resistance to flow of the fluid. And so the stickier it is or the more viscous, the slower it flows. And so you can sort of separate some things based on flow rate. But it's important to know that hydrocarbon properties allow us to separate them out. And um, very, very importantly, we want to make sure we understand the difference in boiling points and melting points, understand how density might help us to centrifuge things, and that solvent extraction, if I've got polar and nonpolar molecules, I can separate them out using that. Um, fractional distillation or fractionation is used commonly as a way to separate oil into its different fractions. And so crude oil is going to be heated and that heating process is meant to make the crude oil so hot that it becomes gaseous. So most of the crude oil that gets heated and is coming in is going to be superheated and become and boil and it then goes into this fractionation tower. And the fractionation tower is used to cool the boiling crude into different sections. So some of the crude will never actually boil when it comes here. And so it remains a liquid and it's collected at the bottom. So very, very large hydrocarbons that have lots of London dispersion force are collected as a liquid. And those things will be used for like bitumen for roads and surfacing and roofing. It's basically asphalt, so very large molecules. Um, they don't actually get hot enough to be able to become gaseous. And then they cool. And so as it, you go up the tower, it goes from large molecules to small molecules. And they're cooled all the way down. And when they cool, they become a liquid and they collect the liquid off at the different points in the tower. And that's called a fraction. So they collect the fraction of liquid at each step. And the biggest molecules are at the bottom, smallest molecules are at the top. These have a low boiling point and these have high boiling points, right? So the size of the molecule plays a big role in here. And each of those different fractions can be used for different things. So we've got fuels for shipping, lubrications and oils, diesel fuel, jet fuel, car fuel, um, and then used for chemicals. And at the top, we get um, these really small ones, and these are going to be considered natural gas. And in Alberta, we use a lot of that. That is largely used for heating in homes. Now you're not expected to know what the different um, fractions are specifically used for, but you do need to understand the connection between boiling point and cooling and collection in the fractionation tower. Um, give a quick breakdown in the next video of some more processing that goes along with, with hydrocarbons. Um, so we'll do that in a moment.